Well, hello, Resurrection, on this Saturday, June the 27th. Not quite the morning anymore, um, but still want to come to you with this video update. Been running around this morning, actually doing a number of things to get ready for tomorrow as we look to regather together for public worship. And so we're excited about that and look forward to seeing those of you who will be able to worship with us tomorrow. Um, it is a step towards normalcy for us in worship, not dissimilar to a number of different things in our lives that we're starting to phase back into. Um, our worship will begin in public tomorrow, um, but with a number of guidelines and restrictions that hopefully you're familiar with. By now, we've posted them on the website. Those of you who are coming to the service tomorrow know these things, and we're really looking forward to being together, uh, even though it's not um, without inhibition. Um, we still are counting our blessings to be able to be together and to do so in a way that is safe, um, to do so in a way that is uh, building community, and then to do so in a way that really honors the Lord with our gathering together. Uh, as you know, we've uh, made uh, a limited capacity available for tomorrow. We had 150 spots that we made available for tomorrow's service, and it looks like we're coming in right around 105 people for tomorrow's service, which we're encouraged about. We understand that a lot of people are traveling. We understand that families with young children um, are reluctant on a number of different levels, one of them being uh, we're not able to provide nursery or children's classes now, so we totally understand that. And then everybody has their own reasons, and so we really respect that and are grateful for your respect for us as a staff and within our leadership for the decisions we've made on timing and then also the decisions we're making on safety and regulations as well as we move back into tomorrow's worship. And so if you have any questions, if you're one of the people that are attending tomorrow, just go to our website and you'll see that. One of the big things that I think that you're aware that we're doing is asking people to wear masks or requiring people to wear masks. And I understand that this is not a popular thing um, to ask people to do. And I understand that this, like seemingly everything right now in our culture, somehow has become a point of tension and even a political issue. And I promise you, asking people to wear masks uh, from our standpoint has nothing to do with politics or wanting to engage in any cultural war. It's just uh, seems very clear to us it's the thing to do. It's one thing to make a decision as an individual. It's another thing to make a decision as an institution. And all along we've been uh, reading and taking to heart what the government uh, says uh, as far as different um, guidelines. And the CDC recommends this. The Knox County Health Department recommends this. Even Philip Fulmer Yesterday uh, recommends this for Vols fans. If you want to have fall football uh, heading, I read, uh, according to Philip Fulmer, he said, wear a mask. Um, I also read this morning that Davidson County, the entire county in the city of Nashville, is requiring mask in public. Anyway, whether you agree with that or disagree with that, that's your prerogative. Uh, but as an institution uh, at this point, honestly, and as the leader of the institution, it's become very clear to me. This is the right thing to do, uh, and I hope that this regulation will not keep you away. I understand there are other things that will keep people away, whether it be travel or, um, you know, a fear for your health or even having uh, symptoms that you don't want to expose other people to. Um, but I really hope those of you who are able to attend will not uh, miss worship just because of some um, inconveniences, some which might be considered minor, some which might be considered major um, maybe in the eye of the beholder. I just want to encourage you to come and to worship together as you are able. Um, next week, we will be worshiping as well, July 5th. Neither one of these services will have communion. Both of them will follow the same liturgy uh, as far as structure that we've been doing online, which will put the service just at about an hour, especially if you don't count the prelude and the postlude. And so it'll be a little bit of a shorter service. And then we'll evaluate what July the 12th and beyond that will look like. We'll definitely be bringing back communion soon, but we'll not have it these next two weeks. And so if you have any questions, feel free uh, to reach out to me. Um, I really am grateful for your affirmation and support. Also important to note that we will be videoing our service tomorrow. Uh, it will not be live streamed tomorrow. It will be recorded 
Philip McCall is going to record it. And then we will upload that. And we don't know exactly what time it'll be available on Sunday afternoon, but it'll be available at some point on Sunday afternoon. You will see the bulletin online. Um, the version of video you will see will be very different than the one we've been able to do. We'll be out of the studio, into the gym. And so it'll just be a recording of our actual worship service from the morning. And in order to follow along with the liturgy, you'll want to be able to view that bulletin either by printing it or making it available on a digital advice, a device. It's on our website. Um, it will not be an edited video, nor will it have the words on the screen. And that's just what we're going to need to be able to do as we move into this season and this phase. We'll be tweaking the ways in which we video that service. We might be able to move into a situation where we could live stream it at 9.30 on Sunday mornings or find a way to get it online quicker. We'll just be experimenting with that. Please be patient with us, um, but that's what we're doing. Uh, the last thing I'll say is uh, just a comment about uh, the sermon for tomorrow and then also this sermon series. As you know, we're in the Psalms of Ascent, Psalms chapter 120 through 134, which are songs, poems uh, that were used by God's people in the Old Testament as they would make uh, treks or journeys to Jerusalem for multiple times a year for different religious festivals. And as it were in God's providence, I didn't plan this, tomorrow's psalm is Psalm 122, which talks about specifically the joy and the gladness we have in being in the house of the Lord. And it really could not be more fitting as we regather tomorrow in the house of the Lord uh, to be looking at Psalm 122, which really just talks about the importance and the uniqueness of worshiping together. And so we look forward to doing that tomorrow. We look forward to folding others of you back in uh, as the weeks come, uh, as the weeks come, as you get back in town, as you grow in your comfort levels, as you just are able to make yourself more available. We will be able to add child care as soon as we feel good about doing that. We know that will bring people back. And it's also our hope and prayer that we've captured some people that are outside of the church or outside of the faith during this season over these last three months. And we hope to be able to see you or see them, your friends, in worship as well. So I just want to conclude us today by reading Psalm 122, which is the text we will look at tomorrow. And you'll see how apropos this is for where we are right now. Uh, the psalmist writes, Psalm 122, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. There, thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Well, amen, and hope you have a great day and a great rest of the weekend, and look forward to seeing many of you tomorrow and others of you in the coming weeks. Have a great day.